Hello, my name is Dr. Mark Allenberry, and I am the Director of Infectious Diseases and Chief Innovation Officer for Access Health Louisiana. There's lots of stuff going on all of a sudden. I live in New Orleans, Louisiana, yay, uh, and I serve as co-chair for the HCOI Infectious Diseases Subspecialty Section. You see me do these updates now for the past few months, and in conjunction with the leadership of the ACOI, I hope these messages are helping you to keep up with the latest on COVID-19. I know that many of you are in the thick of the fight. I'd like to thank you on behalf of all of us uh, who focus on infectious diseases uh, on a daily basis, uh, but also on, uh, on, on behalf of the ACOI as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Moving forward, together with the ACOI, we'll continue to share information as it becomes available, as well as some of the hopeful progress that we're seeing as well. Speaking of the ACOI, are you registered for the virtual convention yet? Boy, I'm getting a lot of stuff all at once here. Sorry, guys. Uh, and then now I've got a cat who's meow. <laughs> it's just a lot. All right. Um, if you are do it today, there is an opportunity to save 50 smackaroos uh, just by registering by September 21st. And today, God bless it. <laughs> and today is uh, the 18th. So you better do it. It's coming up, all right? So it's a few days, it's a few days from now. So don't miss the chance. Uh, the virtual convention will be nothing uh, that you've experienced virtually, right? Uh, and they're pulling out all the stops to make this a very cool event, plus with selections from many of our members, including this guy right here. I may even wear my, my mask too, right? This is the uh, plague, plague doctor's mask. Get it? Plague doctor? Plague. Um, so you don't want to miss it. There's no better or less stressful way to get your CME credits this year. So I look forward to seeing you there and on to the stories. Today, there's just one topic and that's vaccine distribution. Now, it's something that has been occupying my mind, especially since here in New Orleans, uh, we are figuring out the logistic details to make this uh, an incredible, uh, uh, to, to make this logistic uh, project uh, possible, but it's an incredibly large process. So on one hand, I'm excited to talk about distribution since that means that we're getting close. Yet on the other, I'm a little stressed about it since the vaccine distribution and the undertaking will be the largest logistical event in U.S. history when it comes to public health. So I must ask, how do you deliver 660 million doses of vaccine effectively? And that's assuming that um, 330 million people in the country and there's going to be two doses of the vaccine. So what needs to be pointed out is that there are plenty of challenges in front of us when we think about distributing a vaccine. The first thing is trust in the vaccine from the public first and foremost, and how many people will feel comfortable enough to take it. Another complicating factor is adhering to vaccine guidelines. We know there will be several different manufacturers that will have vaccines available, and we know that after the initial vaccine, individuals will need to keep track of, of when they got the first dose and when they get their booster vaccine. Plus, they need to make sure that the booster is from the same manufacturer from the first vaccine that they received, right? So even further giving me concern is that public health departments around the country are underfunded and it's gonna cost billions of dollars to hire staff, acquire PPE, secure locations, not to mention security and traceability of knowing where each vaccine vial is. Uh, oi, ah. So obviously there are many more details that I can get into here, but suffice it to say that there are many, 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 many unknowns and many more details. Then there, of course, is the priority of which groups get the vaccine first. Of course, it will be prioritized by groups who are most at risk, physicians and healthcare workers, then all the way down the line. But for right now, we need to focus on the plan and likely plans will differ from city to city and state to state, making this initiative and even, uh, even more fraught with risk. So just this week, the Federal Department of Health and Human Services unveiled a general outline for the first COVID vaccine doses that would be shipped and administered. And this was created as well with the Department of Defense. The strategy is in four parts and is being done as a phased allocation methodology. Also released this week was the COVID-19 vaccination program interim playbook from the CDC to assist local, state, tribal, and territorial partners in rolling out their COVID-19 vaccine programs. As I mentioned, the plan for the first phase, and I quote, will be focused on 
those providing critical care and maintaining societal functions, as well as those at highest risk for developing severe illness as a consequence of COVID-19. So who are these critical populations? Well, they're quite simply healthcare personnel uh, and other essential workers. The information so far, it seems, is pushing programs that include assembling committees within jurisdictions that include representatives from local health departments, churches, pharmacies, schools, and prisons, just to name a few. Sorry, that's my cat again. Um, yet, both strategies outlined in the Health and Human Services and the CDC still don't provide details about who is to receive the first dose and how exactly that particular vaccine will be transported. <clears throat> Sorry, that's my cat again. Handsome, I'm busy. <laughs> um, still don't provide details <clears throat> about who is to receive the first dose and how exactly that particular vaccine will be transported from factories and warehouses to immunization sites. And note that the transportation issue is an interesting challenge since federal officials have made a promise to begin shipping doses the day after the FDA approves or authorizes a product. Now listen, I agree with the deputy uh, um, uh, and the Department of Health and Human Services who says that the vaccine process is logistically uh, complex undertaking and taking place in a world of uncertainty. Moreover, plans must be laid out uh, uh, knowing, uh, must be laid out without knowing for sure what vaccine or vaccines will get the green light. So all of this uh, that, um, that we need to, to think about, um, and, and, and for you, um, uh, if you're uh, likely working in clinics um, or in hospital systems, will very likely be part of a larger entity uh, like the state or health department um, that will be um, uh, helping the process uh, with respect to um, uh, making sure that your patients will, will get uh, the vaccine. And it's very likely that you, um, the provider uh, and, and, mem uh, uh, and physician, will very likely also be, or we will be in the front of the line to take the vaccine um, when it's available. Um, and, uh, and certainly I think that one of the main issues here, <clears throat> um, is determining which vaccine that, uh, that we are going to take. Uh, and, uh, I know for myself, uh, I am going to be very, um, uh, I'm going to be reviewing the, the data and the research, uh, pretty well, uh, uh, with respect to, uh, vaccines and certainly, uh, reviewing the phase three trials uh, to uh, look for efficacy and look for um, uh, uh, lack of adverse or the least amount of adverse effects. And the other thing to say as well is that they're they're looking efficacy is fifty percent. That that's that's where the bar is right now. So they're looking for fifty percent efficacy, which is more or less how the influenza vaccine works as well. So um, just a couple things for us to keep in mind. I will definitively be. Uh, continuing these updates and, and talking about vaccines as we move forward. In the past, I've kind of veered away from vaccines because there wasn't enough information, but now I think we're in a place where there's plenty of information. So please, as, as always, stay uh, on the lookout for our regular updates and to read more from the sources used in this report. Go to acoi.org forward slash COVID-19, and together with ACOI, We'll, have, uh, uh, we'll keep you up uh, on the latest information to help you respond to your patients while staying on top of the crisis. And as always, please feel free to reach out to me at madairy at math.com. Please stay safe. We can do this together. Thank you guys so much.